All right, how's it going, everyone? Thanks for joining me on a new episode of the Music Viewer Podcast. My name's Josh, and today is a new album review we're going to be doing uh, for the latest Girl in Red album, If I Can Make It Go Quiet. This is going to be episode 57 of the podcast. The album was released on April 30th, 2021, this year. I've been looking forward to a release from this artist, actually, Girl in Red, because she's been on my radar for a couple years now. I was really uh, captivated, um, you know, the first time I ever heard one of her songs, and I went through a phase where I was really listening to her heavily around 2019, more around that fall, winter time of that, uh, right before 2020 started. So, uh, yeah, kind of kind of glad this album came out, and we're getting to review it, but uh, yeah, we will get into it here in a bit. Just before we get started, I just want to let everyone know as well that there is a new episode of the Album Review Series 2 that came out a couple days ago, a few days ago probably, uh, for the latest album from The Spirit of the Beehive, Entertainment Death. Uh, a pretty interesting album in like the experimental indie rock, art pop, art rock scene. Um, may- maybe not, not so much on, like I guess art rock or art pop but it's a hodgepodge of different sounds and genres with noise shoegaze and a little bit of everything going on it was an interesting album overall i dug it so um i'd recommend checking out the album checking out the band overall they're a bit underrated and uh undiscovered by most people the spirit of the beehive but also check out the review for entertainment death i appreciate anyone that listens to the podcast but if you could listen to that episode that would be cool too um and then also an episode of Best and Worst Track of the Week drop not too long ago, uh, titled uh, Money by Gil has entered the chat. Uh, it mainly covers about six or so songs that he uh, that was off of that latest album he released that made it onto the Billboard Hot 100. But we also have uh, some more artists featured on there. AJR, Jason Aldean, Polo G, Lil Durk, Chris Brown, H.E.R., some Latin American artists, Gara MX, and Christian Nodal. So yeah. A bit of a, of a diverse week, but this upcoming week of Best Norse Track of the Week will be even more diverse and have various artists, and will be a lengthy episode as well. There's a lot of music being covered, so uh, that will be released shortly after this episode of uh, the Music for a Podcast with this album review of I Can Make It of If I Could Make It Go Quiet. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's get into this uh, review. So if you're not familiar with Girl in Red, uh, they are a, an an indie rock pop project from Norwegian artist Mary Ulven. If I said that wrong, I probably did. Sorry. She rose to prominence after producing and releasing some homemade EPs uh, around 2018, 2019 that could be classified as like bedroom pop, especially with the time they were released in, uh, I guess, 2018, 2019. A lot of uh, of artists like Claro um, and then various other ones, Kuko, uh, we're kind of doing their thing, and uh, it was really catching traction. Uh, I guess Girl in Red is like a European, more indie rock side of that sort of uh, subgenre. But around the time she released those EPs, her success exponentially grew uh, after receiving, you know, critical acclaim from Norwegian, various European and American publications. While her music was garnering millions of streams online, uh, it's quite impressive considering these were some of her first singles she ever released. Uh, respectively, under the Girl in Red moniker, she did start at some point early on releasing Norwegian music on SoundCloud, but this project, Girl in Red, it was relatively new. It still is relatively new, and uh, she certainly has made a name for herself, especially with a, you know a DIY sort of thing coming out of Norway. Not many, you don't hear much stuff coming out of Norway every day. And like I was saying earlier, I discovered her around 2019. Uh, her earlier tracks like Girls, Say Anything, and Fell in Love in October, I felt were nice, ref- were a nice, refreshing sound to the indie pop and rock genre at the time with the sleepy nature that naturally was created on those tracks. They kind of reminded me of like an artist's 
that's perfect to listen to like on an overcast day in the winter or in the fall. Uh, the song topics and lyrics felt quite candid as well, something I think that can be quite underrated when looking at what an artist can bring to the table. I guess that makes sense when you take into consideration that the girl in red uh, learned to do everything in their bedroom as a teenager after receiving a guitar from their grandfather around the time I guess they were 13 or so. And yeah, it just seems like uh, you can kind of hear a signature sound uh, with those two first EPs that uh, are just really nice to hear, um, you know, from time to time. I don't constantly listen to Girl in Red's music, um, you know, since, you know, around 2020, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, I might have t- taken a break, but I noticed that... They were releasing some singles uh, leading up to this album release. I think I covered um, one of the lead singles on an episode of where I reviewed some tracks. Uh, you Stupid Bitch. We'll get to uh, that track later again here. So, um, yeah. How does this album kind of fit into, I guess, her overall discography now? Well, I just wanted to go back to her second EP, Chapter 2, since it was the most recent recent release project. And what I found there, the opening track, Watch You Sleep, was a candid and romantic cut. The song features several details about a relationship she was in. Uh, It's a pretty simple track with some clean, plucked guitar and some breathy vocals that make up most of the song's texture. Uh, it's pretty low. Key, it's a pretty low key type of track, with the climax of it uh, being quite ambient and reserved. That's not too uncommon for a lot of girl in red music. Uh, I need to be alone has a more upbeat flavor, coated with some crunchy, clean guitar chords. Uh, the track features an anthemic pre-chorus and chorus about constantly uh, stating that you need to be alone, uh, with the line "I need to be alone or I'm gonna lose my shit" being the highlight of the track. Uh, Dead Girl in the Pool is a nice track. It's probably it's probably one of the more standout tracks of her over overall in her discography, uh, due to the track really displaying her poppy side, displaying her knack for being able to write a pretty catchy and anthemic pop and indie rock track, uh, with the chorus being the focal point. Bad Idea is probably one of her best known tracks. I remember that making like XMU rotation indie rock radio rotation uh, around the time it was released with the exception of dead girl in the pool at the time it's pr- it was probably it's probably one of her best known tracks uh around 2019 uh the track really reinforces the notion again that she really has a knack for writing an anthemic indie rock pop type of track uh and the track does have a huge chorus with a two door cinema club like melodic lead guitar line coloring the track it's a it's quite hooky with the with each line stating it was a bad idea over and over again and the track is just captivating from beginning to end so that at the end of the day i could say chapter 2 was a pretty nice ep there wasn't any tracks i disliked if anything i thought uh, I was favorable towards all the tracks, um, and some of the tracks even featured some of my favorite songs from, I guess, 2019 as well, like Bad Idea. So uh, going into this new project, if I can make it go quiet, uh, I feel like it's an important project, obviously. It's the debut album. Um, there's definitely some stuff that changed, um, you know, with this debut album from her her various singles and EPs that she released early on. Um, The typical girl in red sound, I'd say that uh, is very, I guess, ambient, sleepy, um, sleepy in a good way, um, moody. Uh, Some of that has left um, the, this debut album. Uh, She definitely is hammering on that, uh, that knack for writing pop tracks. Um, I think she's even moving into more of like an, an alternative pop, alternative sort of sound, uh, you know, stuff that's maybe more closely related to, uh, I, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but maybe AJR or like maybe acts like Missio at times, stuff like that, or um, hell, even, I don't know, Imagine Dragons. Uh, not to say that this album in any way, shape or form is uh a hundred percent or even like thirty percent like those artists let's just say if there was some notches moved towards that direction it very well may have been 
um, you know, something along those lines. And I think um, overall, if I can make it go quiet, is maybe going towards a possibly more accessible route. I've seen several artists do this since the I've been reviewing a lot of albums on the podcast. Um, Hazel English did that. Uh, Heinz did this. Um, and then maybe a couple artists I'm missing out on uh, have been doing this. It's just, I think maybe it's more apparent what maybe Girl in Red is doing. If I can make it, if on this album, if I can make it go quiet, uh, it's feeling like it's maybe going towards more of like an alternative, uh, alternative pop and rock sort of, uh, thing, uh, honestly. And, um, I think overall it probably worked. I don't, I can't say that I enjoy if I can make it go quiet more than, uh, you know, an album that sounded hypothetically solely like chapter two or her earlier cuts. Um, this is definitely a change. Uh, but yeah, you know, every artist has to change and evolve at some point. Um, the opening track here is Serotonin. Um, the track borrows from some modern pop and trap aesthetics with the boomy synths and percussive textures in the verses. That's kind of what I was... This is a good example of the point I was making. It's going towards more of like an alternative, you know, pop and rock sort of sound. You know, stuff that like bands like Missio or 21 Pilots or even Imagine Dragons have done. Hell, even AJR. Um... It's just kind of borrowing from those, that sort of side of things, I guess, in the alternative space. Um, but I do like the lighter and ethereal nature that the course provides on here. It's the saving grace of the track, honestly. The course also feels like a constant buildup to a bigger drop in the track that later does come in the form of like some instrumental interlude towards the end. Uh, the per and I will say the percussive textures just sound so thin and cheap at, at that moment at the end that the track is building up to. And I guess the payoff just wasn't all that there as I was hoping. Uh, I, I was a bit mad on the track, but it wasn't bad. Um, Did You Come is definitely a highlight. The second track, I like the heavy and distorted bass line that guides this song. But I will say the drum track here can just sound a bit buried and thin on this song as well, like the previous one. Um, but I do like the added textures that we get on moments where the chorus is being reiterated. The choice to make the voice warbly and soaked in effects wasn't a bad idea either. I dug that. It's an interesting track at times. And I definitely dug this track about the same every time I listen to it or a little bit more. So it, it does slightly grow on you, in my opinion. Next track is pretty cool as well, Body and Mind. This track kind of sounds a bit like what I was pointing out earlier, where it sounds like, you know, an alternative band, like an alternative pop or rock band like Missio, uh, with the instrumental material that's provided in the beginning with the modern alt-pop aesthetic. I, I will admit we get probably the most exciting moment thus far with the presence on the chorus. It's, it's a very big sounding anthemic hooky. She's utilizing her strengths here. Uh, the spaced out and buzzy synth hits that make the track sound quite powerful are nice as well. And the drum track on here just sounds quite clean and crisp as well. It's, it's a pretty good track. I really dug it. <clears throat> the next track, Horny Love Sickness, I didn't quite find to be uh, much of a highlight, but uh, I like the more spaced out and light bridge material that's presented on here. And the track does end a bit unexpectedly with a bit of a head scratcher with like a helicopter blade sound. Uh, I'm sure there's some sort of meaning behind it, but I couldn't figure it out. Uh, but we do get a, a nice track afterwards with Midnight Love on the next one. Uh, honestly, it sounds like this is like the truest uh, sort of typical girl in red sound that we've gotten thus far that I'm used to. Uh, the track is covered in like this somber mood. The plucked string textures contrast nicely with the rest of the track's sound. And her voice does sound a bit turned down on the climatic section uh, with a bunch of effects put on, I guess, the vocals to make it sound a bit more powerful. Um, but I don't know. It, I don't know if it quite works that well. It's an interesting track that definitely had its moments. Uh, but... I will say the album does transition a bit <clears throat> right here with You Stupid Bitch. This is probably my favorite or one of the best songs on this album. 
Um, I dig the driving eighth note bass line that structures this track. It kind of reminds me of like the same style she was going for in a with a bad idea with the track bad idea on the chapter two EP with the anthemic indie pop nature kind of reminds me of like 2000s indie pop rock. Uh, the ambient guitars that color this track all throughout are quite pretty. Uh, the double vocal lines provide a certain attitude on the vocals that just kind of help get the angsty point across on those choruses. It is executed quite well. Um, yeah, really dig the track. And I will say the, tr- the album begins to, become a bit stronger uh, from here out uh, with, you know, some exceptions. Rue, the next track, is probably um, <clears throat> a bit of a head-scratcher. It kind of sounds like an Oliver Oliver Tree kind of track with how it's composed and the light sense of quirkiness on it. But the track, you know, can feel a bit unfulfilling as it was ending. Uh, and then it suddenly went into this louder section that brings some grit to the track, but it's kind of wasted with how short it lasts and how it's thrown on with such an afterthought um it wasn't a bad track just you know a bit confusing at time uh, at times apartment 402 kind of sounds like a ballad um that could have been like on the last stand atlantic album for some reason uh i guess there's some slight emo pop punk influence on here uh but the track kind of just sounds like something that would have been like on a old Ellie Golding album, like a deep cut that no one really knows about. It's an interesting track, um, but uh, we do get some really nice highlights to end out the album with period uh, starting with that track. Uh, This one has more of a traditional indie rock sound that's provided uh, on here. I dig the bright keyboard sounds that go along with the melody and the vocals. I dig the low key nature that is all throughout this track. It reminds me, um, of the unique sound that I really got, that really got me into Girl in Red. Um, that's on all of her best sounds where she naturally blends in with the track's ambience and overall mood that's being created. Uh, you know, in other words, she does enough to make the track flow organically without being much of a distraction. She kind of just ends up being part of the track and not quite the focal point. And, and it all just kind of combines to this nice work of art where every sound and textured instrument has a meaning and it's just combining to something bigger, um, so that that is a good track in itself. Uh, or next track, I'll call you mine was nice as well. I like the bounce in the track with hints of alt adult alternative on it. Uh, the present percussive textures and how they're mixed are nice. Uh, it makes the track sound a lot more engaged. And it, this track honestly is an improvement uh, to the rest of the album. Uh, the climatic payoff where we get some energy and angst in the vocals. Tell me that you'll never leave the line is a nice moment. And the anticipation for the chorus to come back is a great moment as well. You're just kind of waiting and waiting for it to just keep on hitting and hitting. Uh, And it's just exercising her best qualities as a songwriter. uh, And really what I like about Girl in Red, to be honest. Uh, And then the the track ends, uh, the album ends on instrumental afterwards. Uh, It would feel like this. It's an ambient instrumental outro. Some synth strings and bright keyboard textures. It's a bit dramatic. I'm not sure if I like this as opposed to having a, another standard track on the album, but honestly, this is a lot better than getting something meh or subpar thrown in at the end, which I kind of find to be the case on a lot of albums more often than not. So, um, you know, kind of, I guess, kudos on doing something different at the end of your album to Girl in Red. Um, and honestly, uh, I was expecting a bit more for her debut album, um, but at the end of the day, I can't say I am really all that disappointed. There were some, there were several highlights, and there's a lot of payoff on this album um, that you know kind of just stuck through, like you know, all the listens by the third, uh, third or fourth time. Um, I wasn't really getting tired of a lot of it, so that's always a good thing. Um, and overall, I think I'm feeling favorable towards it as a whole project um, with the, you know, the big the big tracks that I really dug with You Stupid Bitch. Um, I'll Call You Mine was a nice one, and so was Period. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess, like, early on, there were some nice moments on Body and Mind. Did You Come as well maybe had its moments. Uh, with, you know, some questionable stuff like Horny Love Sickness, couldn't really 
get past like the slight AJR influence on there. I didn't mention it earlier, but it's on there. Um, and then, you know, just the weird aesthetic that's on Rue with the Oliver Tree nature that maybe had some more potential than ended up being on like the final product here. Uh, so, you know, there's just stuff from track to track. It's not always hitting 100%, but, you know, uh, nothing really does most of the time. I, I think this is just, you know, an interesting debut project. And I'm really just still waiting for what Girl in Red's going to do next because I'm still, you know, a fan of the 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 act, the project. Uh, you know, I don't really know what to call Girl in Red. It feels like a band because I know she tours with the band, but it's really just her doing production and, you know, songwriting and vocals and stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> I respectively call it just, uh, you know, a project by one person. Um, you know, super, I'm just still um, curious to what's next for the act. Yeah. And uh, overall, I think this is decent. If I had rated it, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. And uh, if you're into indie rock at all, really, at, in any shape or form, there's probably something on here for you. It kind of hits, you know, all the all the all the boxes for what would make an indie rock album um but i guess i don't know it is it bedroom pop too some of it yeah honestly at times i kind of was reminded of like the latest benny album as well so um hell maybe if you're into like that sort of brand of things you're gonna get something out of this um if you're just kind of like an average rock listener this might not be your cup of tea you're probably uh, you probably feel a bit uncomfortable listening to a lot of the pop uh, sensibility that's thrown on here. But hey, you might really like this. For all I know, this is just my opinion. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not a bad album. And looking forward to what's next for Girl in Red. Um, seems like there's a lot of potential there still, considering this is just a debut album. So uh, yeah, it's the end of the review. If you ended up listening to the end of the episode, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, my name's Josh. I'm a music reviewer. We'll be covering some more stuff soon. Let's see what else is on the list. I'm probably going to be reviewing that new J. Cole album that I'm inevitably going to have to do probably for best and worst track of the week. Oh, yeah, and we'll probably be covering the new um, Crumb album at some point. Just have to uh, get that ready as well. So, uh, anyways, yeah, thanks for listening to episode 57. The album was If I Can Make It Go Quiet by Girl in Red. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you dug what you heard, comment, good or bad, whatever you want to put on there. Uh, you can put anything. You can put something stupid. Um, I don't really care. Just uh, And then if you're on your preferred listening service, subscribe there too if you want. But uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. See you later.